Hello and welcome to issue number 45 for Comic Station for November 6, 2013. As you can see, we are down a person, but we have a large amount of comics to cover today, so we're going to try to run through this pretty quickly. And of course, we're brought here is uh, Venom. Yes, uh, Teeny Fox sent Venom in replacement for her this week, but I don't know, he's just not as talkative or charming or, or as good looking. Nowhere near, but weighs almost as much. This thing is <laughs> massive. Try that out. He's, he's lovely. He would look and feel wonderful on my bureau at home. Sure. <laughs> uh, he's got nice details on some of the rebar and everything on the ground here, too. Yes. So. He's definitely a fancy Oh, I'm going to push that out of the way. <laughs> Let's uh, get into it. Yeah, uh, jumping right into it. The first one we have is Drumheller from Image Comics. This one is a paranormal investigator. It's very trippy, very confusing. Honestly, I got more out of the back end where it summarized the story than I did reading it. Kind of it. Uh, if you really like the trippy artwork and uh, some of the more mind-bending paranormals, and you might like this, but overall, I just found it really confusing. All right, now here's something for everyone! <laughs> I know a lot of you have been talking about this on my page. I certainly have been looking forward to this for a very long time. It is Amazing X-Men number one with the return of Nightcrawler. Um, so no spoilers, but um, anything that was already leaked by Marvel, I will go into. Of course, you've probably seen the preview first page online and read it. Um, he is actually dead and actually in heaven, so I liked that he wasn't just lost somewhere and then they found him. They actually, <clears throat> he actually was dead. Um, and at least fell. they admit that. Yeah, at least they admit that. And then he he fell or or bamped from from heaven to come back to the X Men. But um, there's an awesome uh, battle scene with him and his father. There are bamps everywhere. Blue bamps, <laughs> red bamps, bamps. In they infest uh, Jean Grey's Institute for Higher Learning where you see Firestar come in and there's a lot of uh, the fun kind of awkwardness or like the humanness of the mutants that is something that I love so much about the X-Men but overall this was just so much there's so much action in this and the action was just so great that it made you want to stand up and cheer while you were reading it and you know root for your hero um, definitely left you with a cliffhanger for the next one um, I, I can't wait I'm yeah. just the X-Men are a favorite by everybody for mass majority of people for a reason. Yeah. So, and it sounds like they're picking it right up and continuing it. And I love that caller. <laughs> and this was also um, some of the artwork that I like that they um, put him back into his kind of original costume. And the big thing for me, yes, the cover tells the truth because there is a swashbuckling scene where he has a number of swords. Yes. And that's awesome. Not just one sword. Bunch of swords. But yes. I took a lot of inspiration from this for my latest uh, Nightcrawler cosplay. Um, and that was nice to see that in action. Yep. The next one we have is one, if you saw the Halloween special we have. This is 68 Hollow Ground. This is a one-shot special edition. So 68 basically is in Vietnam times. Uh, zombies are infesting Vietnam. They found their way over to America in some of the latest uh, series, issues in the series. And in this one, this is actually two stories that intertwine very nicely in rural Mississippi in a church. And I just thought it was really well done, if, especially if you've been reading the 68 or if you just want something that is a contemporary zombie story that isn't just overdone. Great. Uh, next on the list was Shahrazad. This is a kind of straightforward pirate story. There are giant squids, there's sirens, there's damsels in distress, there is a shipwreck, and there is plenty of sexy uh, sexy shots in this. The colors were really warm, and that I actually found was very engaging. They Big Dog Inc. always does a really good job. They're always very particular about their covers. And anybody that does the cover art also does the inside art. That I really liked so. about it. It was very, very reflective inside of what you saw outside. And I really enjoyed, there were some very cinematic shots of like, just, you know, a part of an ankle and a leg and just like an, a shots of the eyes. And, and I liked that and I thought it was engaging. It was certainly not really deep story-wise, but it was a fun, quick read and very, very pretty to look at. I can say this, uh, I do have a little intro with them. Uh, we met them at the Philadelphia Comic Con and Big Dogging. Uh, explain a little bit. Shahazad is uh, about 1001 Nights um, and 
so she is actually telling these stories, so this is actually her, like, her lives. She's lived, like, a thousand and one lives. So these are all different stories of her life. Uh, the next story we have, another famous woman. Uh, this is Legends of Red Sonia. Now, this one I picked up right away, not just because of Red Sonia, but because Gail Simone, as with the Red Sonia uh, title, she's doing this as well. And it kind of came as a little bit of a surprise to me because the first story, it starts off what you would expect. Uh, somebody is tracking down Red Sonia because she stole something she attacked and she does what she does. Uh, but then this actually has multiple stories. So basically the storyline in this is that these stories are being told by other people about her. So these are the legends of Red Sonia as... Uh, speech took it down the road and how things get like maybe a little over exaggerated or stuff going forward. Uh, the artwork uh, does separate these stories very visually however the second story kind of didn't hit the mark with me vi uh, visually but some people may like that art style it was a little more uh, abstract uh, art style it was more cartoonish I think. Alright and now we have Cataclysm Ultimates Last Stand Galactus. Everybody loves Galactus. Who doesn't like somebody that likes to eat planets? Um, <laughs> um, he gets the munchies. He comes to Earth. He begins by taking a bite out of New Jersey. Hey! Appropriate! <laughs> um, the Ultimates show up. They're just confounded. They're trying to figure out what um, what he is and what's going on. And um, all the action in this is, is really nice as everybody's scrambling to try to figure it out. Any uh, notable names in the Ultimates that we should know of? Um, everybody's in here. There's Thor, there's Iron Man, there's Captain America, there's everybody that you know is here. So it's very familiar characters. This issue was mostly all action, but very gripping action didn't make me think hey, like what's good. going yeah it didn't make me think like hey what's going on here or I'm not into it it was a very gripping uh, gripping action and I'm excited. did the story carry it along or was it just action after action it's mostly action after action but it's it's setting up the scene so it wasn't so maybe the story is gonna come <laughs> yeah they de there definitely is you know they were they were planting seeds for a story it there wasn't a lot of story here but they really introduced so many characters that I think it would be them cramming too much in if they were trying to tell us too much story as well. Fair enough. It did a good job. I felt it was balanced. This one you may have been seeing if you've been saying the pressers or mm. teasers. <laughs> uh, Image has been doing, a, I know a lot, especially for the press emails, have, has been pushing this pretty well. This is Alex and Ada, number one, and general overall story is that this is kind of a futuristic view where in the future you have implants in your mind that control computers so you literally you think it and it happens so you think lights on it comes on uh, no so more clapper no more clapper you can't make that joke anymore <laughs> uh, and then sets the coffee turns the coffee on there's a robot that brings you to coffee so it's very back and forth even at work and phone calls and some people are accepting of it more than others and at some point or other, at kind of a little history was some of these androids went astray, AI, and they killed some people. And it was a, they kind of look at it as a small uh, catastrophe that happened. And so that's a little underlying theme under there. And basically, the main character apparently lost somebody, and his uh, kinky grandmother. I love the kinky grandmother, uh, decides to take it in her own hands and buy him an android to keep him company. So it starts off with the android, but it's a really nice setup to the world and everything in the first issue. So it's more of a setup, set up the world, set up what's going on and some of the underlying themes, and the next issue should go into the storyline with the android. Okay, next up is uh, Painkiller Jane. This was two comics in one with two different artists, which made it very different. I did like both of the artists take on the character. She's really, it's kind of all that girls will be girls, kick ass and take names. Um, I really like the attitude of Painkiller Jane um, and the character. There's a lot of women in this that are not only 
strong and sexy and there's a lot of you know kind of gratuitous artwork but it's balanced <laughs> it, it, it is it's balances the, the whole shot in there where um a Saudi princess is telling painkiller Jane that her nipples exposed and she's like ah whatever we got no time for that um keep going okay. it's, <laughs> it's definitely interesting but it's great because at no point are you looking at them you know it's not demeaning in any way it's empowering it's uh, you know take the okay so no it's gratuitous but not demeaning yeah it's no hold barred like Weird sexy line. sexy smart girls you know, in embracing their femininity. Um, the art styles in the first one and the second one, like I said, are so different um, and take the character, though, in really exactly the same direction. They just portray her visually very different. So that, that I felt was very interesting, too. But definitely enjoyable. My complaint on it is the first half of the book was crammed with way too much dialogue. It mm. did almost feel like you were text reading. Heavy. Yeah, it was so text heavy. It was um, really overtaking the art a little bit and the art was really nice. Okay. Uh, the next one here is Protectors Inc. Uh, this is from Image and Straczynski is the writer on this so hence why I picked this one up and it really shows as far as it sets up kind of a little mystery inside and the dialogue does really well although this is again it's a readers comic in this one and the overall story is in World War II a asteroid something comes down where it ends up giving powers to what becomes the first of these protectors and the first protector was the Patriot he turned the world tide in World War II when he came home suddenly start random people start getting powers a court in here they make a point of it so it something to bring up is that it was usually rich people that ended up getting these powers. So you don't know why and Protectors Inc. is formed basically it's a little company and they all kind of become sponsors of certain cities and so the Chicago uh, superhero and then there's the Detroit superhero and then the Philadelphia superhero and so forth and every once in a while a new one will come up and it, uh, friendly competition on another city, uh, kind of like a sports game, and they kind of make it like that. It is a sports game. You cheer on your hometown hero and so forth, and as long as nobody gets hurt, it's okay. The city covers the damage, all that, uh, but you kind of get the sense that these heroes become more of just, they're happy to collect a paycheck than actually be heroes, and I like this storyline just because I like dystopian kind of superhero stories. I don't like straightforward superheroes. Um, the twist is that the original hero, ten years ago in the story, uh, the Patriot retired. He disappeared, and nobody's seen him since. But now, starting in this comic, mysterious murders are starting to happen. Nobody's connected the dots yet. Nobody's really realized they're happening. But people are disappearing throughout the comic. So, you're t you're getting this idea that something's happening. And of course, there's also a note: no bad guy has ever gotten powers. Hmm. All right. Next, Marvel's hitting it heavy this week. Long shot yes. saves the Marvel universe. They're it, really bringing out Image and Marvel are just yeah, <laughs> going in there, going at it this week. Um, Long shot saves the Marvel universe. Awesome. Been waiting for this one to come out as well. It really introduces Long shot well to readers who might not know who Long shot is. Um, does it really well through the story? There's a lot of comedy in here. Um, you know hashtag superhero problems with hmm. Iron Man's suit getting wet and kind of glitching out on him <laughs> and them having trouble getting through Manhattan and um, the surrounding areas as would, you know, really be the case. So I like that they brought in a lot of that oh, humor. Traffic jam in Manhattan? Yeah, no. traffic jam. You can't bring <laughs> you can't bring that tanker on the ferry. What are you kidding me? <laughs> um, but it was a, a lot of fun. It was a fun, good, quick read, and I want to see what kind of trouble uh, Longshot gets everybody into before he gets everybody out of it. There's also a That's really his. yeah. This was a really interesting, mysterious villain in this. Very cool. All right, this is actually our new releases this week, and we actually have a more new releases, but they're full reviews on Front Towards Gamer, so that will be up in our review section. For our first review this week, we're going to start off with actually a video game tie-in. This is Plants vs. Zombies Lawn Mageddon from Dark Horse Comics. This is a hardcover collection of, I think it's six digital comics that were brought together, and it is 
as with the video game, it's an all ages adaptation of the popular video game. The characters were really fun. They're likable. Uh, they all have they have they have a little personality quirks, and it's really lighthearted and sunny disposition that makes it a really fun read. Leto really liked this, and he recommended it for those looking for a less serious zombie story, and quote unquote highly recommended for kids. It's written for them in mind and it will be great fun and introduction to comics. So as with the games, I don't know how many hours I've wasted with the game and <laughs> I'm still going with it and it's really just a fun read. Next up is Baltimore The Infernal Train number three. Um, I pleasantly surprised jumping in on number three and knowing exactly what was happening as I started to read. There was Plenty of gore, just like really gross, horrible, <laughs> wonderful, disgusting Wonderful, gore. disgusting gore. <laughs> yes. Um, and it crescendos in a symphony of blood, death, mystery, and then it drops off suddenly. So it baits you as a reader to come back and get some more gore. Always leave them wanting, and gore is a good way to do it. The next one we have is The Occultist number 2. Uh, this is, after a decent first start, it kind of loses its potential. It falls a little flat. As with Baltimore, uh, she found it a pleasant surprise to jump into it. Unfortunately, Leto has a hard point for comics that are not new reader friendly, and this is one of them. Um, the glacial pacing and the confu it really confusing and tacked on supporting character scenes really don't add up to much, especially since the main character is kind of dull. He doesn't really have much to him. He's not fully fleshed out, and it's th he's Leto somehow still uh, holds on hope for the series. There's some interesting ideas in it. Unfortunately, so far, it's not keeping up with the trend of the first issue. The last one he has is Chaos Comics number 5. And as a number 5, Leto absolutely railed on the fact that it was not good for new readers. Even for somebody that has been reading it, he found it very hard to jump into it. Um, once again, it's like someone managed to distill out all the worst elements of Youngblood and make it into a comic that reminds us all of what was wrong with that decade of comics in a horrible haze of anti-nostalgia. They tried <laughs> to go into 90s comics and they went too far in the 90s comics and just can't get into it. Oh. And Can't win them all. <laughs> while he did not like it, and you can kind of tell that from this that quote, I urge you to read it the full review and all these reviews on FrontTowardsGamer.com and even Catalyst Comics because he, I love when he rips things. Yeah, it's always enjoyable to hear him or to read him sinking his teeth into something. <laughs> Absolutely. And, yeah, sometimes the bad things are more fun to read, to, to read and to write <laughs> than uh, the good ones. That's basically it for this week, but I do want to touch on two things. First of all, uh, there is a New, t uh, t New York Times mentioned that they had an interview and there is going to be a new Miss Marvel. Mm -hmm. uh, this new Miss Marvel will be uh, New Jersey based and the big thing that they really pushed in the article and in the interview was that this was going to be a Muslim character, female of course, being Miss Marvel. And personally I liked the idea behind it because she is somebody that finds out she has powers sh shifting She's always been inspired by Carol Danvers, who becomes Miss Marvel and then later Captain Marvel. And so therefore, she takes up the name Miss Marvel as a homage to her hero. And being a fan of Captain Marvel, uh, I like the idea. However, I'm a little turned off by, in the article, they mention how they've tried other minority characters and it's failed. And certain comics, Spider-Man being the big one, uh, normally sells certain number and then when they tried a minority character it sold less than half of that and I really think they were just it kind of sounded like they were already setting it up as a fallback excuse of why if they this cancel it. might not work however and the, the other thing too is that this sometimes re when you read a review like that it's one thing to be like oh hey did you hear the news this is coming out and get your thoughts about that but to read Marvel actually saying that it seems a little bit forced I mean of course they need their numbers and they need marketing but it does just seem a little bit forced to see if they can gain, you know, yet another niche of people or a new group of readers. Maybe this is not the way to do it? <laughs> yeah, it just, it seems a little forced. But I'm looking forward to it just to see what they do with it. And yeah. I'm always, 
I'm always intrigued by strong female characters, hence why Captain Marvel is one of my favorite. And I do read all of the new comics of hers. And so I'm interested in it. I'm just kind of holding out hope. The last thing I want to mention is Super Number 2 actually came out. And Super from Unlikely Heroes Studios. And Super Number 1, I did a review as well as a number of mentions uh, here on Comic Station. Absolutely fantastic. Love it. Number two is even more. It's fantastic. It's amazing. It's just... It, the artwork really, when I was reading it, stood out because half the time I didn't realize it was such a small independent publisher. And the storyline was really funny. There was, there was a really great scene in there where there's an award ceremony and the Tony Stark kind of mad scientist guy in here. And if you look in the background, there are random references to everyone. There is a one point, there is a TARDIS with Doctor Who, and all the different doctors are all around, <laughs> spread around in that one corner. And that's just one tiny, itty-bitty corner of that one panel. And it's just spread out. And I, I actually had it more fun just half the time I was just looking for all the character <laughs> You're references. having a Where's Waldo moment. Absolutely. <laughs> all the characters, all the comic characters, all the pop culture, television, so forth. So it was really, really a lot of heart put into that comic. And the reason I'm mentioning this is not only number two is out, but we are going to be doing a giveaway. We have... Free stuff! We love free stuff. <laughs> so, we have here super number one, we, ha we have super number two, and we're going to actually put together a little care package. The way this works, and we're, since this is starting out, we're going to try to keep it really simple. Anyone that leaves a comment below this video answering the question, what kind of power would you like? I know it's a and kind why. of why. Absolutely. Tell us why. What your superpower would be. Miss Mar the new Miss Marvel has uh, stretching power, being able to turn shapes, and of course Captain Marvel has super flight, invulnerability, power beams, so forth. So, what would your power be, and why? What would you do with it? And anyone that answers these questions, every person that puts this comment in this video will get an entry. And then next week, for the next video, we will announce the winner. The winner will get the first and second issue, as long as some trinkets, special editions, as well as a thank you, maybe some pictures, yes, a I think letter. Yes, me and Teeny might out. have a print or two you think for, you might? for the lucky might? winners. Yes. So <laughs> we'll put together a little care package. And this is going to be, this is, I think, a nice start to try out our uh, giving, giving away some incentives. And thank you for watching our videos. Yes, yeah, so continue to leave us feedback, comments, let us know what you like about the show, what you don't like, and please let us know what your superpower would be. Yep. And next week we'll tell you what ours would be too. Yes. Teeny Fox should be here. That'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us for Comic Station. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully Teeny Fox is back next week. Yes. I'm sure she, she sends her love. She misses everybody. She's away on a very important mission. Yes. She's saving the world. <laughs> so, and... Thank you. This has been Comic Station issue number 45 for November 6, 2013. And we will see you next week. Bye. Bye.